All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Jan Someone Six back here again, and today, man, we got to talk about this Browns Ravens game real quick because uh, just another game where just the Browns just, eh, they just didn't play the greatest. Um, the Baltimore Ravens clinch home field advantage throughout the entire playoffs. So this is just a really, really good victory for the Baltimore Ravens. They finally get some revenge against the Cleveland Browns after that embarrassing loss early part of the, you know, during the early part of the season. Uh, Lamar Jackson once again continues his MVP reign. It's pretty obvious at this point that he's going to win MVP. He, he probably will be uh, uh, unanimous uh, MVP. And um, man, just a really, really good performance by him. Uh, over a hundred yards. Three touchdown passes, over 200 yards passing, just a very, very efficient game. I think he completed over 70% of his throws, or I think maybe a little slightly under that. Uh, but I know he had a really, really, he just had a, 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 a just did a very efficient game. Um, and um, yeah, just another MVP type performance. The question is for next week for the Ravens is, is Lamar Jackson going to play? Um, they, they're 13 and two, they have home field advantage. I mean, you could try to improve your record and go 14 and two, but I don't know. I, I think it would be really idiotic at this point if John Harbaugh started Lamar Jackson. Uh, maybe you put him in there for maybe a quarter or maybe you put him in there for a half and then you work, uh, you know, trying to get your second and third string players in for the, uh, you know, during the second half, maybe try to, you know, cause obviously you don't want to disrupt the timing and, you know, you don't, you don't want really, you don't want to try to create that rustiness between Lamar Jackson and the chemistry he has with those players. Uh, you don't want to try to disrupt that, especially when you guys have home field advantage in the playoffs. Um, but who knows, you know, maybe they'll play him for a little bit, you know, just to, you know, just to keep, keep that warm up. And, uh, but obviously we're going to, we're going to find out, um, for the Browns. Good God. Uh, I, <laughs> um, you know, I feel really, really bad for Browns fans because, I mean, these guys are very, very loyal. Um, Browns fans are, they're not, they're, they're humble. I would say Browns fans are, at least the Browns fans I know are, are really, really humble. Um, but they've been waiting for a long time in order to have success, right? The last time the Browns had any type of success was back in the 80s. And you now come here in the 90s and you look at the 2000s and the Browns have been a joke. Uh, the Browns have been a joke. Matter of fact, they've been the toilet paper, the used toilet paper of the NFL. And it's not the Browns fans' fault. They've had incompetent general managers. They've had an incompetent front office. They've got they've gotten and drafted the wrong players, whether if it's the Johnny Manziels and the Justin Gilberts of the world, but those are just examples. Um, the Browns have just been a horrible franchise for years. And to finally see that you guys finally got the talent, to see that you guys finally get guys like Odell Beckham Jr. and you drafted Nick Chubb, Mac Wilson's been really, really good. Joe Schobert has been a dog. Uh, who else has been a dog for you guys? Denzel Ward, right? Played like an all-pro corner last year. You still have him on your roster. You got David Njoku. Jarvis Landry, I just said, I think I just said Odell Beckham Jr. Baker Mayfield, the way he played last year, you thought that he could take that next up and be a superstar for you guys. Kareem Hunt, who was the league leading rusher the last uh, during his rookie year and had a phenomenal year until obviously he punched the woman uh, last year, but he was on his way to another rushing title. And you got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt in the backfield. And yet the Browns still find a way with all that talent to underachieve. Um, and not just underachieve, but your players won out, your coaching staff are your, your coaching they know they're going to get fired so it's kind of like why try hard you know why, why, why go hard in the first place uh you have an, a shitty owner in jimmy haslam um the only people that are really really suffering right now are the fans because at least these players and the people in, in in your front office they're getting paid the browns fans are not getting paid they're wasting money they're wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars, especially for season ticket owners, to go to your football games. And the fact that your team has been underachieving for so damn long. These Browns fans, I feel sorry for them. Because I've been there. I'm a Bills fan and I had to suffer for 20 fucking years. So I understand where these Browns fans are coming from. But to deal with this type of crap for so many, for even, for, for even way longer than, than I've been alive. For them to deal with the type of just shit the type of shit that these guys have had to deal with for so many years it's not fair for these guys these guys haven't done anything since the 80s 
This has been going on for almost 30 years. Oh, I just re I feel sorry for Browns fans that they had to deal with this this year. I really do, especially with the high expectations that you guys had, especially with the with with, with the amount of talent that you have. Of course, you have high expectations, but once again, your team underachieves. You're miss you 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 guys are gonna miss the playoffs, and who knows? I mean, at this point, you guys actually might finish six and ten with the talent that you guys have. At least for the Dallas Cowboys, they're fighting for the division. Look at what look. Look what look what the Browns have done. They're about to be six and ten with a with a Super Bowl squad, and it sucks for them, man. I really do feel bad for them for if if you are a Browns fan because you don't deserve this. You might have done some shady shit in your life, but you don't deserve this to deal with this mediocrity, to deal with this disaster. It's bad enough your uniforms suck. Now you guys got to deal with with Ashley sucking on the football field too for so many years. It's just it's trash. It really is. I mean, I'm I'm sorry guys. I'm just not a fan of the Browns uniforms. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it all. Um, that's in that's my opinion. But still, um, it just sucks. But yes, the Ravens uh, completely won this football game. It, it, it was it was starting to get a little close, but the Ravens pulled away off. You know, they, they pulled off uh, with it. And uh, they have clinched home foot advantage, and they're on their way to potentially competing for a championship. Of course, the Patriots, you got the Chiefs, you got the Texans, the Bills, you got a lot of teams to, to, to deal with. But the Ravens will be Super Bowl favorites. Lamar Jackson will win, uni will, uh, will win the unanimous uh, MVP award. And the Browns, once again, have underachieved. But really, how shocking is it? It is the Browns. And uh, with your owner with your front office, and with your head coach, and Freddie Kitchens, who has completely fucked everything up for the Cleveland Browns this year, is it really a surprise that these guys have really underachieved? Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys liked the video, I would appreciate it if you guys like it, share, subscribe, uh, especially if you want more sports content as I upload on a daily basis. So anyway, guys, that's all I got. This is Jensen16. I'm out. Peace.